in this lecture we are going to discuss intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors so first let me start from intrinsic semiconductors So an intrinsic semiconductor is one which is made of the semiconducting material in its extremely pure form so what is an intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor is that semiconductor which is made by a pure semiconductic materials so for example silicon and germanium in their pure states are intrinsic semiconductors and we know that energy band gap for germanium is 0.7 electron volt whereas for silicon it is 1.1 electron volt so if we compare this energy with the thermal energy at room temperature we can say that we can easily provide this energy to the semiconductor so the energy gap is so small that even at ordinary room temperature there are many electrons which possesses which possess sufficient energy
to jump across the small energy gap between the valence band and conduction band so we know that for a pure semiconductor that me draw its energy band diagram so we know that this is minimum of the conduction band and this is maximum or top of the valence band so for zero kelvin temperature we know that there is no electrons in the conduction band but as we increase the temperature for example let's say it's silicon and we know that valency of silicon is 4 so as we and its energy band gap for silicon is 1.1 electron volt so as we increase the temperature and near room temperature there is sufficient energy that can take electrons which are in valence band and can go to the conduction band so at room temperature this is ac and this is ev so at room temperature there are some electrons that can have energy which is greater than to this energy band gap and can go to this conduction band so let's say if there are four electrons in the conduction band and at the same time we can find there are four holes so due to this thermal energy some covalent bonds are broken and due to this covalent broken covalent bonds we can have electron and hole pairs so in this way we can get equal number of holes and free electrons in a in an intrinsic semiconductor so let's assume that we have an intrinsic semiconductor let's say silicon and we apply a potential to this then we know that free electrons these are free electrons and we know that these free electrons will move towards positive terminal of the battery and at the same time holes will be attracted towards negative terminal of the battery so here this green color is representing electron and this red circle is representing hole 
So in this way, we can say that under the influence of electric field, let me write and we all know that this is positive terminal and this is negative. So under the influence of electric field conduction through the semiconductor can take place by both free electrons and holes. Here These are free electrons, free electrons, but therefore the total current inside the semiconductor is the sum of current due to free electrons and holes. But here one thing is very important to note that in the interior of this semiconductor current is due to the moments of these free electrons and holes. But in this exterior wire, the current is only takes place due to electrons. So we can't assume moment of holes in this metallic wire. So in this metallic wire, current is flowing only due to electrons. So it is very important point that can be noted. I am writing here that it may be noted that current in the external wire is fully electronic in nature. That is by the moments of electrons only. This point is very important. So how we can assume 
this situation or we can think that what about the holes so if we mark this and as b and this end as and we can see that holes are moving towards and b and electrons are moving towards and a so the holes being positively charged move towards the negative terminal of the battery or supply whatever you want to say it so electrons being positively charged move towards the negative terminal of the battery and as the holes reach the negative terminal that is we denoted it by b electrons enter the semiconductor near the terminal and combine with the holes thus cancelling them and at the same time the loosely held electrons near the positive terminal that is we denoted it by a are attracted away from their atoms into the positive terminal this creates
न्यू होल्स नियर द पॉजिटिव टर्मिनल which is again drift towards the negative terminal meaning here is that as i said earlier that is in the interior of this semiconductor the current is flowing due to both electrons and holes electrons means free electrons but in this external wire the current is only or current is flowing due to the movements of electrons only so when this hole reaches at this terminal or near this point b electron will come from this negative terminal of the battery and will recombine with this hole here so in this way this hole will be eliminated from this semiconductor but at the same time this electron will be attracted by this positive terminal of the battery so due to this attraction here we can get a new hole so again this new hole will be attracted by the negative terminal of this battery so in this way we can get a complete circle of the electric current or in this way we can get electric current in the semiconductor here i again repeating that it is very important to know that how does current take place in the semiconductor and how does current take place in the metallic wire so now i am coming to extrinsic semiconductor the intrinsic semiconductor has little current little current at room temperature that is all the intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductor the current at room temperature they have very little in amount so to make a device for that semiconductor it is necessary to increase the value of that current so to improve their conductivity we have to add some suitable impurity atoms so to be 
यूजफुल इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिवाइसिस द इंटेंसिक सेमी कंडक्टर इंटेंसिक सेमी कंडक्टर मस्ट बी अल्टर्ड so as to significantly increase its कंडक्टिंग प्रॉपर्टीज एंड दिस कैन बी अचीव्ड बाय एडिंग ए स्मॉल अमाउंट of suitable impurity to a pure or intrinsic semiconductor it is then Known as extrinsic semiconductor. So, if we add some impurity in a intrinsic semiconductor, then that semiconductor is called as extrinsic semiconductor. and the process of adding impurities to a pure semiconductor is known as doping sometimes intrinsic semiconductor can be known as undoped semiconductor and n extrinsic semiconductor can be or is known whatever you want to use here can be called or known as doped semiconductor
and the amount of <coughs> the amount and type of such impurities have to be closely controlled during the preparation of extrinsic semiconductor generally generally for 10 raised to the power 8 atoms of semiconductor one impurity atom is added so this is the normal ratio that is for 10 raised to the power 8 atoms of semiconductor and we add one atom of impurity so this is the common ratio of addition of impurity and here the purpose of since we know that conductivity in a semiconductor is due to the presence of free electrons and holes so we can either increase the number of electrons or holes to increase the electrical conductivity of the semiconductor so here the purpose of adding impurity is to increase the impurity is to increase either the number of free electrons or holes in the semiconductor as we will see in the next lecture if a pentavalent impurity is added to the semiconductor and one thing is important to note that here i am assuming that you know that all the elemental semiconductor semiconductors like silicon and germanium are belong to group 4 of the periodic table so their valency is 4 so if you don't know 
about this please read about the properties of group four elements so since we are adding pentavalent impurity and valency of silicon or germanium is four so we can get an extra free electron so is added to the semiconductor a large number of a large number of free electrons are produced in the semiconductor on the other hand addition of trivalent or trivalent impurity creates a large number of holes in the semiconductor depending upon the type of impurity added to the semiconductor extrinsic or doped semiconductors are classified into two categories that is first one is p type semiconductor and the second one is n type semiconductor so if we add pentavalent impurity to a semiconductor then we can get n type semiconductor that is in that semiconductor the conductivity is due to presence of free electrons and if we add a trivalent impurity then we can get many holes in the semiconductors and so that semiconductor is known as p type semiconductor so in next lecture we will see about n type and p type semiconductor and one important thing here is that i am not elaborating the points related to the covalent bonding in silicon because i am assuming that you know that 
in silicon coolant boards are present and you i'm sure that you know that how do these coolant boards could be broken and how these electrons and holes could be generated in this semiconductor so in next next lecture we will see the n type semiconductor